Hello, welcome to I Love Stocks. Please subscribe, ring that bell for future updates, and if you like this video, please hit that like button. But I came across this article this weekend that was brought to my attention, and it kind of got me to thinking. Maybe I might want to do a devil's advocate video to this guy's deal on uh, Robin Hood. The four ultra popular Robin Hood stocks that could drop 16 to 41% according to Wall Street. Well, as we know, Wall Street's missed the boat, and they're bullish on some of these trades. Definitely, we're at a bottom in a lot of them. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, is this kind of a setup for them fat cats to get into the trade? So I'm going to be looking in this next video. I'm going to go over these next four stocks that they mentioned in this in this article, and we're going to look for maybe a pullback or see if I think that we can buy at a support level that is going to be pretty accurate for this coming week. Now, I know this article's got a lot of attention, but also we're talking about momentum stocks here. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one right off the bat. And that's going to be my favorite stock of the year last year. Number one is Tesla. I fought so many bears on this stock all the way up all last year, and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that, and it can go back to 10 years that I fought bears on this stock all the way from $50 all the way up to $2,200. Now, I'm still very bullish on Tesla, and I always will be unless something happens to Elon Musk. But for right now, I'm still bullish on this stock, especially now the fact that they're going into the S&P. So let's go ahead and pull up the Tesla chart and have a good look at it. I'm going to pull up the yearly and just tell you how good of a run we've had on the yearly only. I mean, this thing's down here, and this has had a split. And it bounced off that 200 back during the COVID crisis when it began. It was a good opportunity. It was at a different price at that time. I'm thinking maybe around 180, maybe a little bit uh, around there, 180 to 200 bucks. And then it ran all the way to 2200. Now we've, with the with the uh, the split, it pulled back to like a 70 dollar price value, and it's run all the way up here to 654. I'm still bullish on this trade. And I will be. I think next year in 2020, one, we will get to a thousand real easy. But for right now, on December 21st, this goes into the S&P. So I've been bullish on this, and I debunkle what they say. I'm the devil's advocate to that article. Now they're trying to put scare tactics in to bring this stock down so they can get in it at a better price. We did have a nice little pullback right here the day before yesterday, and is kind of descending. I've only gone wrong once with this trade, and if I, I think if I would have held it for the expiration, I would have went ahead and been green, but this is when they come out with the cyber truck, and it had that big crash. You know, I thought we were going to get a big bounce off that presentation, but the, the presentation was pretty bad, especially when he threw the rock at the glass, and that just gives sediment like, hey, <laughs> they got out of the stock, and then it successfully recovered real fast. So let's go ahead and take a look at this at the 20 day and we'll get a better perspective of where I'm going to be trading the stock. I think we still have a solid support right here where we had this ascending triangle right here at the, at the um, 604 level. But we did pull back to that first support down here that, that I called out in the room at 573.44. It was pre-market dip and usually on them pre-market dips I'm really excited to get into the trade and scalp it. I am scalping from this stage on out until we have a nice pullback. And if it does pull back to this lower support level that's down in here between 555 and 573, that's going to be my entry. I'm calling a knife on this for a low possibility, maybe at 540.72 if it does do that. But I'm also bullish on this trade, and there's reasons why. And I'll show you on this trend line right here as you go up to this bottom here and move it right into here. Hit it to the right, it runs right up to this bottom right here. And I talk about this a lot in the room, about how to extend a, a trend line out and find support. 
So if it does fall below this here channel, it's going to be a strong buy into this area right in here for me. If not, if it holds this support at 581, it can run up. And excuse me, I think it, <coughs> I'm getting ready to sneeze. <coughs> excuse me very much. I hope that wasn't too loud. But we got to break a resistance here at 626.32. So we got a low support down here. If a knife happens this coming week at 555.41, that first strong buy area is going to be here at 573.44 with the double bottom. And this will be a triple bottom down here, more or less. But I like to see it hold this trend line here at 580.74 and start to squeeze into a flag. And then eventually it'll break out and we'll get back here at 665. But I'm bullish on Tesla, and I will be for quite a while. Let's go ahead and look at the next stock that they're talking about. And we'll just cruise you on down here, AAL. I'm bullish on AAL. Now that the COVID vaccine is out, and I think we can find a rebound on it also. So let's take a good look at AAL. I'm uh, I'm not a uh, I'm a uh, technical trader. I'm not a fundamental trader, but it's always good to watch the fundamentals. I already know more or less by the momentum and the tape and the volume if I want to get into a trade or not. Same thing here. Now we're going to look at this chart seriously. I'm going to go ahead and look at the year. I'm going to clear this. Well, I don't really want to clear this up yet, but let's look at the, um, the yearly. Yeah, let's clear it up. I can't read it. We're going to clear it all up. Much better to read now. We've definitely been getting higher lows. Definitely getting higher lows. Now, if this thing pulls back to any kind of low support area, it's going to be right in here where this peak was right here. And that's going to be your low, 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 low support. And that's going to be right around the $15 mark, maybe a little bit under $15. And we'll just chalk that in here right now. Let me change this. We're talking about AAL. They're bearish on this stock too. Think it's over overran its course. I'm bullish on it. We're gonna to try to find some support levels in here. And we're gonna to try to catch the knife. If it does decide to pull back. Now those are my three marks that I want to stick with. I think this is a pivot point area right in here, right around 16, with a low support right around 15. Anything below that is gonna be a strong buy, and we'll put that right here at 1436. Then we're going to extend it on up for a resistance break, and that's going to be right here, right around the, the 1835 area. So let's go ahead and go to the, well, there's one more mark I want to put in here. you got to look at the full picture. History repeats itself. I use the extended trend line method. We do have a golden cross right here. This is a very positive, positive move. Now, that guy in that article probably didn't see the golden cross, but this is telling me that we're getting ready to have a bullish breakout. And if it does pull back to this support level right around 15, I'm in the trade long. So let's go ahead and look at the 20-day, though, and I might change my mind. Might adjust it to right about here on the 20-day. And I'll put this as a low support channel for a strong buy. And I'm going to color that in right now. We're looking at the devil's advocate of an article that was written. Over the weekend, I disagree with him. I think it'll cause a little bit of volatility, and the buyers will come in and take on, take back in the trade and try to break this triple top. So we've got three support levels. We've got the, well, let's put a bar right in here. Let's make a channel right in here. Every chart, every time frame tells a different story. I always like to go back to the other time frames, and then I'm going to adjust this down to right there. Then I'm going to color this in. This is going to be my first support channel to get into the trade if it decides to reverse. In fact, we're going to raise, we're going to take that out. We're going to raise this up. I think right about in here. It's hard to say. I like this down here too. Yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and make this box a little bit bigger. That's a pretty big spread. I'll do this. I'm trying to determine here. Now, okay, I got 
we'll do this right in here. This, is, this looks a little bit better. I like how this 200 is right here. I can't deny that I've got a confirmation right at 16 bucks with a 200 SMA. We did have a golden cross on the early. We have had a pretty nice little run up. So solid support for a strong buy, no lower than 1504 to 1539 with that first channel of support between 1601 and 1665. So that's where you want to look. And I'm going to look for a little equilibrium in here. I'm going to change the color of this to maybe that color right there to where I can see these a little bit better. We're going to have an equilibrium right here. Maybe right about near for support level. To me, a lot of times when these guys come out with this, they're scared. They want to get into the trade, and they know they missed the boat. So we've got a low support channel between 1601 and 1665, and maybe a real strong buy if it gets to 1624. And then if that doesn't hold, we're definitely going to pull back to this 1509 and 1539 in for a very strong buy. But I like how this 200 is run right into the bottom of this channel, so I think that'll hold. Now let's go ahead and look at another one that's on this list. ACB. ACB is in the pot sector, so that alone tells me that I'm, I'm semi-bearish in this sector, but also bullish. So I'm about 60% bullish. If I will be more bullish if Biden becomes... Uh, but right now it's running on speculation. Speculation, but the marijuana sector is a strong sector and it will survive and it will get stronger in the long run. In my lifetime, I thought I'd never see this day, but the United Nations decriminalized it to a, a whatever it was a, like a hair compared to a heroin. That was a big deal to me. That opened the doors up worldwide. America is probably the next path to, to total legalization, and that's where the most of the market share will go. Now, Aurora Cannabis, ACB, let's take a good look at this. Canada's had some issues. This is in Canadian pot stock. So you want to kind of be careful with that. And I think that America is a stronger market. So I can kind of agree with him on this one that maybe we'll see a little pullback. And let's go ahead and go straight into the chart. ACB. I like ACB, don't take me wrong. But there's issues with the company. And we've had a pretty good little run, and it did break down to the lower support level, which was right here at 997. I kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and clear this chart up and clean it up, and we're going to start fresh. And we're going to look at the yearly and see where those 200, where the moving averages are. That's a three-year. We're definitely under the three-year 50-day. So let's go to the yearly. That's what I want to gauge this on. We're still above that 200, which is very positive for the move. And if this 50 keeps curling up, like I've said before, we could start to see a powerful move back up. But for right now, I want to try to get into this trade at a support level. We do have a hard resistance right here at this number right here at $19. Then you have another one right here at 1305. And then you're going to have a low support right down here. So that's the channel that I want to stay in is right in here. I want to see it maybe if it does knife and pull back, I want to see it pull back to the 50 SMA on a daily yearly chart. So jot that down on a pencil and paper. That's what we're going to use as support. It held support off of it before and I think it can do it again. But right now this wasn't, we're, we're bullish into this trade especially after the election. So let's pull up the 20 day and see if we can find anything else that would make me change my mind about this trade. I got a support level right here and I got one right down here. I like this one here at 833. I like this one here at 783 and I like this right in here at 925. And we got another one right in here I'm using this here dip and then that bottom support line right there. So we kind of had to have a a resistance level right in this channel right in here this is like a little channel and if it decides to pull back it can
and that's going to be your lower support right there at 955. It's kind of hard to judge. ACB is. If any kind of knife pulls back, it might consolidate no lower than 833. This 833 is going to be a very strong buy. And then maybe this first support is going to be right down here at 925. So we're going to color that in. I'll show you why. We had these resistance levels right in here, and it just couldn't break it. Then we had the inverse head and shoulders, and then she had that nice breakout. That's, that's a sign of instant. In, and then we had the engulfing candle. It pulled back to that support level, and then bam, went on up. So this is going to be your first support, your second, and your third. I can't see it going any lower than 833. The resistance to break is going to be that 933. If we come in in the morning, run it up to the uh, 200 on the 20 day, or maybe have a hard resistance here at 1073. But we are setting up with higher lows, and it could break out and move on up to 1073, or it can pull back to this support level of 925 and bounce back up to resistance at 993. So I agree with them a little bit on the ACB part of it. Let's go ahead and look at another one. This is the last one that's on the list, and everybody likes this stock. There's a lot of institutions that are in this stock, and it's called Nile. I'm not as bullish as a lot of many people are on Nile. I'd rather be invested in Tesla. It's my number one trick of the day. But if we pull back to a strong support on Nile, I'll be willing to go ahead and, and go along with it to a certain point. Now let's go ahead and look at the chart. General, there's other companies out there that are a lot better than Nile. Nile is run by the Chinese government. That's the only way they're making money right now. Plus, they don't have their own factory. That's another reason why I'm not as bullish as others with a Nile. Now, we do have a descending pattern on Nile right now. I think it's getting ready to squeeze into next week, and we'll keep finding resistance off this top trend line until we get down and do the squeeze. Now, when we hit that squeeze, we could see a sharp bounce back up, or we could see a sharp bounce down and back up. I'm bullish on Nile, but I'm only bullish when it's at support. My thesis, you buy at support, you sell at resistance. You don't hold a trade long, especially in the pot sector, or, or it depends, like it depends. The mood changes. There's so many startups that are coming out in the EV sector. I mean, China alone has 200 startups. China alone. That's just China alone. We're not talking about Europe. We're not talking about America. We're not, you know, we're not talking about Fisher or these other companies. China alone has 200 startups in the electric car division. A lot of them are going to fade out and merge and fail. So personally, that's why I'm not 100% bullish on Nile because it's run by the government of China. That's where they get most of their money to run this business. We did have a nice breakout from $2.00. And it ran all the way to 58. Now, if that ain't irrational, I don't know what is. They're broke. They need money. They just had an offering. They just can't. I just can't see it. So, I think we can pull back again. If we do not hold this 4082 support, I think anything below that, and is going to be a entry to run back up to 4082. Now, if we hold this 4082 and it squeezes out for the rest of the week and, and consolidates to a triple bottom, I think we can run back up to the top of this trend line and maybe even run it up here to the 200 SMA on a 20-day one minute. We've tried to do that a few times, and it's failed on that 200 SMA. So it's always good. I have two different charts. Don't take me wrong. I use them different ways. I have the EMA chart set up where I have the 200 this tells me what kind of mood the stock is in a lot of times. Right now it's bearish. It's below the 9, and it's way below the 200. So to me, if I'm looking at the EMA, I think we're going to go ahead and dip on down and recover. Now if I'm looking at the SMA, I kind of look at the opposite. I think maybe we can hit the triple bottom and retrace back up and hit the 50 and the 200. So I just got to watch the tape. I got to watch the volume. And I gotta see if the money flow is coming into it. You know, if they're 
the calls. You know, I like to pull up my uh, little thing here. I'll put Nile. Let me. And I like to see how many calls have been coming in on this trade. And it's definitely people are very interested in, on the calls at this support level at 539, almost double of what the puts were. So that tells me that I could be still bullish on this trade, and it might be a good entry if we hit that triple bottom. That's going to entice me to maybe scalp this on Monday. So let's take another look at it. I see a triple bottom play back up to resistance. I could probably scalp this for 50, 70 bucks a contract and get out of the trade. I'll only scalp it from here on until we break this 200 on the 20 day one minute. I'm not long in Nile at all. It's only a scalp trade for me and a day trade. And that's it. I once wanted to be the devil's advocate of this article. I think, you know, they put these articles out. They talk about the fundamentals, but they don't talk about the technical side of the trade. And I'm sick and tired of, of these fat cats bashing the retail traders. If it wasn't for us retail traders, we wouldn't be able to make a good living. And I think one day eventually, and a lot of people will disagree with me, that we're going to be one step above the fat cats and we will con control this market. Or a lot of us will, 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 and I know a lot of a lot of a lot of you retail traders that are making real good money every day, more than you ever thought you'd ever make. I'm not as risky as a lot of traders are. I can I'm happy with five to a thousand a day, you know, on a good day, on an average day, you know, five hundred, three, two to three, five hundred. I'm happy with that. I'm I'm a, you know I'm just happy with that. To me, that's good. But I know that I. I've been at this for 15 years, and if I really wanted to get crazy, I probably could. So this is I Love Stocks. Please subscribe, ring that bell. Let's do a little bit of trading with these four stocks come Monday and see how they react. I've gave you knives on every one of them. If you want to take the trade like that, there's probably ACB is probably the only one that I'm not as bullish as the other three on. I think we're definitely at a bottom on the AAL. On If it pulls back, I'll still be getting into it. I think the same thing with Nile. And I think this definitely I'm 1%. I'm 100% bullish on Tesla. I love stocks. Please, if you like, hit these little links over here. Follow us on Twitter. Also, have we have our Stock Twits accounts, and we'd appreciate that. Hit that like button, and we'll see what happens this coming Monday.